Hello student, I am Afreen and this video is powered by Ageline Gokart Championship. So while designing, student makes some common mistakes which can affect the cart. To avoid such mistakes, Ageline Gokart Championship has taken the initiative for new teams to clarify doubts. Today, today's video is about how to add a new material to a part in ANSYS workbench. So let's start with the video. Here we had taken a sample project in ANSYS. Uh, so let's start with the project. In ANSYS workbench, first we had taken a sample project. Uh, in ANSYS, there is in stat uh, we have taken the type of static structural analysis. Here we had taken a product which is a component, uh, a, a, a go-kart, simple go-kart chassis. It is a simple go-kart chassis and we have analyzed here a front impact analysis which, which is clearly done and had an results too. So here if we go to the geometry part, here we can see the material assigned is structural steel. And this structural steel is default material provided by ANSYS. So to change this material, we had to go to engineering data. By clicking engineering data, we go directly go to the slide where we can see the material which is given by ANSYS default. Uh, below here is properties assigned to properties assigned to structural steel. Here the temperature and here here is the graph like uh, life strain, life parameters and all. So for adding material, we had we can click here and add the material. Uh, generally, chassis are made up of different material, and we here we are taking AISI four one three zero as a material for chassis. So here is an material property which I have taken from different sources. Uh, these are the properties of AISI four one three zero. And the marked properties are only required for front analysis or um, only required for analysis purpose. So we had to adjust these properties in ANSYS, ANSYS workbench. So here we can go and take name the component, name the material. AISI. 4130. So to add here things, we can just go to here, drag and drop the material. I want density, I want isotropic elasticity, I want tensile yield strength, tensile ultimate yield strength, ulti ultimate strength, compressive strength and ultimate compression strength. So this, these are the properties which we are required and we had to fill the value in yellow boxes which are highlighted by an workbench. So here we can see the properties. We just, what we can do, we just adjust it like this. Yes, so here is density, uh, first unit assigned is gram per centimeter cube. So in gram per centimeter cube, it is 7.85 uh, and in isotropic elasticity, we had to mention two things, uh, any of the two things. So we are mentioning here bulk modulus and shear modulus. So here bulk modulus is in gigapascal and here is megapascal so bulk modulus is 140 and triple zero and it will become gigapascal 
and shear moduluses. Eighty gigapascal. Eighty three. We had here tensile strength. Tensile strength is tensile yield strength is four sixty megapascal. Four sixty. Our compressive strength is also that. Ultimate strength is five sixty. So here we can fill all the necessary data in the property column of ASF four one three zero. Now moving back to project. we can see our model is been reexamine again as we had changed something some properties in engineering data so by clicking on model it will come like stream upstream data need to be re reread so it will read reread again the library so clicking on yes we can go to the main workbench Here it will read and again give it give us result. So here we can see in part there is mention structural steel. So we can go move to AISF four one three zero. Yeah. After moving, uh, we we can see that it uh, the analysis is unsolved. So just. Solving this will get the same result as we had get for structural steel. Now we can get these results for ASF four one three zero. So by adding proper material, the design will much more. The design will much more better. Like this. So that's all for today's video. for more tips will upload the next new videos thank you